Okay, so for example two, you are going to see that a is one, b is negative six, it's not six, it's negative six, and c is positive 12. The y-intercept is zero c, so it's zero comma 12, because c is 12. And remember, if you put in zero for x, because you want y-intercept, the x's cancel and you're left with 12. So then, axis of symmetry is negative b over 2a. So it's negative, we do parentheses because we're gonna insert something for b. Over two, we do parentheses because we're gonna insert something for a. So in the b slot, we have to plug in negative six. In the a slot, we plug in one. So double negatives on top is six over two, which is three. So the axis of symmetry is going to be x equals positive three. That would be the vertical line that slices through our graph. Notice the axis of symmetry, that x value of three, right? That x value of three is the same as the x coordinate of the vertex. And the reason is because it slices through that ordered pair, specifically at x3, because it's a vertical line. So you only want the x value, or you get the x value, I should say. Um, another thing that people do is sometimes if you don't do parentheses up here for b, uh, they just put it like, they might put a positive six because they would see that negative symbol and they would get confused. And I always throw the original negative up on top with the B so that I, I don't get confused. I just like to do that, but you don't have to. Okay, so we now know that the X value is three and then we have to find the Y value of the vertex. And how you do that is you plug in whatever X value you have in parentheses in the X spots of the original equation, right? And you see what comes out. So three squared is nine, negative six times three is negative 18 plus 12. And so we have nine minus 18 is negative nine, plus 12 is positive three, so that's the y value. So we wanna make sure that we put that ordered pair, that vertex, in the center of our table and plug in minimally at least, two points on the left, two points on the right. Now, I did this one purposely just to show you something that wouldn't be equidistant for a certain reason. So I picked to plug in two and one, those are two x values that are smaller or to the left of three, and I picked four and six because those are two values that are to the right or bigger than positive three. We're just zoning in on the number three, right? Because X is the input while we're plugging in. So I noticed that, okay, two is one unit to the left and four is one unit to the right of three. So their Y values, if they're the same distance, if X is the same distance away from the vertex X, the Y value should be the same. But notice that the number one is two units to the left of three, but six is three units away from the center. So these values are not gonna be the same because one and six are not equidistant from the center. And again, you don't need to remember that, but it's a good time saver. So let's plug in one. So if I had y equals, and I do, parentheses one squared minus six times one plus 12. I would get one minus six plus 12. Oops. Yeah. And then we would get negative five plus 12, which would get us seven. So in went one for x, out came seven for y. So our output is seven. So that ordered pair is one seven. Then if I plug in two, scroll up a little bit. If I plug in two for x, we would get two squared. Always use parentheses. Don't just pop that in your calculator. It won't do a lot of operations. Make sure you do PEMDAS, the exponent first, because you can't simplify in the parentheses. So two squared or whatever is in this parentheses squared will always be positive, so it's four. There's nothing in front, well it's a one that I'm gonna multiply by. So the value's gonna be the same. Minus six times one plus 12. PEMDAS, 
parentheses, exponent, multiplication is next. So we have to do negative 6 times 1 next. So we would get negative 6. We'll drop down this 4. We'll drop down this positive 12. Remember, if you don't see a sign in front, you know it's positive value, right? So 4 minus 6 is negative 2. And negative 2 plus 12. is going to get us, I think I did something wrong, possibly. Uh, should get us 10, but I think I did something wrong. Oh, geez, I see what I did wrong. Okay, back up for a second this one. Notice what I did, I plugged in one. Oops, okay, if I'm plugging in two, two here, should also be a two. What did I do? So 2 squared is still 4. Minus 6 times 2. Minus 6 times 2 is going to get us negative 12. And so what am I doing? And 4. And so we cancel, right? And then we get positive 2. I know because these are equidistant, or if I plug 4 in, my output will be 4. Since 2 and 4 are one unit away from 3 on the number line, right? If you go and draw a number line, and you plug in. Are we looking at a chart, right? Since 4, right, that x value and 2 are 1 unit away, then their y values are the same. So I saved myself a little time. So now, if I choose to plug in 6, I'm going to get y equals in the x spot, plug in 6, minus 6, in the next spot, I'm also going to plug in 6, so we're plugging in the same value, plus 12. So 6 squared is 36, 6 times 6. PEMDAS we multiply next, so negative 6 times 6 is negative 36. Drop down our other values. And so those cancel. 36 minus 36 is 0, and 0 plus 12 is 12. Okay, so when I look at my table, I see, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. Those are close and they're on my graph pretty much. But my y values range and go up to 12 and on here I only have five. So I decided on my y axis to change my scale. Um, you can count by whatever you want. I decided to count by three, so I just crossed it off. Um, so I wrote three, three plus three is six, six plus three is nine, nine plus three is 12, 12 plus three is 15. And then down here you would do the same since you're counting by threes. So, so we would have to write negative three, Right, negative 6, negative 9, negative 12, and negative 15. You just need to be consistent. But your scale on the x and y axis can be different. So on x, I can count by 1s, 1, 2, 3. For my y's, if I choose to count by 3s, it has to be 3, 6, 9, 12, so on and so forth. Okay, so I'm going to plot my vertex first. So it's at 3, 3. So we go over here here. Now just pay attention to your scale. Just like sometimes when people give you graph paper and you just always assume you're counting by ones, that's why you have to be careful. And I sometimes actually like to do a little star by my vertex so that I always take my pencil and start at there and then move out to the point and go through the point. Start there and go through the point. It usually gives you a better looking graph. Okay, so now I'm going to plot 2, 4. So x is 2, so the right 2, up 4. I'm just going to say it's right in here somewhere. 
just approximate. 1, 7. So I go to the right 1 and up 7. I'm going to say it's right in here. I'm approximating. Okay, 4, 4. So 4, 4, I'm going to say it is right about here. And 6, 12, right? If I went one more out, 6, 12 is right here. Now I picked this one specifically because notice how these blue dots, the other ordered pairs that I found when I made a table, don't look nice and symmetric like our last one, right? Those ordered pairs were nice and symmetric, so it was easier to draw a U-shape. You still need a U-shape. So obviously the more points you plug in, the nicer your graph will look. So I need to have U-shape. Start at the center, go out, make our U-shape. And go through those dots. Start at the center. Make your make sure it's making that curve and a nice shape. And go oops through the dots and arrows. Okay, that's how you could draw a nice picture. And I'm going to do one more video for the last example, example three. And again, just make sure on your your work that you're doing that you're showing you're showing um, your work for what you're plugging in. If you don't have graph paper, it's okay. You can just do a rough sketch, right? Like, and start to do a rough sketch. Okay. Um, yeah, and just again, remember that your vertex you already found. So you could put the vertex you found from last time in the center of your table, and then pick show you know the points that you're going to try to find, points that are on the left and points that are on the right. And when you're trying to think, what should I plug in? You're zoning in on that x value of 3. Okay, what's smaller? 2 and 1 are smaller. Pick any smaller numbers. Then pick any numbers that are bigger. I chose to do numbers that were close just because of my graph paper. And sometimes, like this problem, you might want to change the scale. Or think about your scale. Like if you're just drawing it freehand, after you have your table, maybe look at it and go, oh, okay, here I should count by 1s. Right, and you could say, okay, here I'm gonna count. You don't have to count by threes, you can count by twos because I just have a few slots on my graph paper. You count by fours, whatever you want to count by. Just think about what would kind of make sense so I could see those dots and it wouldn't look so clumped together. Okay, there's one more video after this.